Hello, uh, my name is Cathy Bergen and I have been asked by Haymarket Books to talk a bit about my book, uh, which is part of their historical materialism uh, series. So, uh, my book is called Bitter with the Past but Sweet with the Dream, Communism in the African American Imaginary. And that quotation, Bitter with the Past, Sweet with the Dream, comes from Langston Hughes' poem, uh, New Song. And the book really is a study of three African American mid-century novels, um, Richard Wright's Native Son, Chester Hines' Lonely Crusade, and Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man, and more specifically, how these novels represent uh, the Communist Party. For all of the protagonists in these novels, and these are novels that are very much concerned and interested with African American uh, masculinity and identity, and in all of these novels, the Communist Party um, are absolutely pivotal to repudiating forms of white supremacism. Um, and I was interested not so much in looking at whether these are positive or negative representations, but more as to why it is that communism is seen as so central in these three very different novels. So Lonely Crusade and Invisible Man um, are, are infamous in their negative representation of the Communist Party, although there's been somewhat of a rush to name that in relation to later Cold War anti-communist discourses. But I argue that the representation of the Communist Party in these novels is one that is motivated by a notion of betrayal. And of course, betrayal is about a loyalty to something, a broken loyalty. So these are not anti-communism representations in terms of a argument about the inability of a class-based politics to comprehend and understand race, but about a failure to do so. And that also therefore involves me in, in, the, in the history of this period and um, in the impressive campaigns of the Communist Party between the wars to place race at the centre of their politics, but also on the negative impact of the zigzags uh, dependent on Soviet foreign policy, uh, which impacted on all Communist Party work, uh, particularly um, after the signing of the of the Nazi Soviet Pact, so um, the um, on the one hand I'm looking at the, the the negative representations as they're known in relation to Himes and Allison, but I'm also revisiting uh, Native Son, Richard Wright's Native Son, where often Communist Party representation in this book I think is is read in a very surface and shallow way, precisely because of the way that the novel is has been dismissed as so-called protest literature. Um, my book is also thinking about the ways in which African-American communists mobilized uh, black history and the black radical tradition um, in relation to their, their, their contemporary politics. And in that, I look at um, a black newspaper called uh, the Harlem Liberator uh, and its, its discursive address, if you like, to black readers, the models of black political identity it was interested in. So I suppose you could say roughly my book is also, it, it's a book of literary history, but it's also interested in questions of form and the politics of literary form. So if you're interested in my book, I suggest strongly that you go to the Haymarket website in order to access it rather than uh, the big giant companies. Um, if you have no interest in my book at all, I still suggest you go to the Haymarket website, not only for the, you know, the rich uh, books that are there in relation to the historical materialism series, but actually beyond that as well. And it's very important to support independent socialist books, booksellers uh, in these times. Thank you.